Let us first start off with what is recombination. So, in recombination, this involves chiasmata formation during prophase 1. So you'll need to revisit your knowledge on meiosis to understand this completely. In that chiasmata formation, non-sister chromatids from the maternal and paternal chromosomes of a homologous pair may break and reform. If they break at some point, any gene located below the point of the break will be exchanged. When this exchange takes place, that is known as recombination. The further apart the two genes are on the chromosome, the more likely they are to be exchanged. So let's look more closely at how recombination works. In order to do so, we need to revisit how gametes are formed normally by meiosis. So here we have one homologous pair of chromosomes. We have two genes on them. And therefore, since the genes are on only one homologous pair of chromosomes, they are linked. You can see at the bottom the genotype represented by the letters is capital A, lowercase a, capital B, lowercase b, representing the A's are representing gene 1, the B's representing gene 2. So when we go through normal meiosis, DNA replication occurs during the synthesis phase prior to cell division. Each chromosome in the homologous pair now has identical sister chromatids. So the homologous pair separates during meiosis 1, and then the sister chromatids separate during meiosis 2. Now notice that the notation for each of these genes remains, because the gametes formed are as follows at the bottom. I would strongly encourage you to keep a line representing the chromosome as you work through any kind of linked problem. So which gametes are formed when recombination takes place? Here we've started with exactly the same homologous pair of chromosomes as we had a moment ago. And once again, as normal, DNA replication occurs. Only this time, during prophase 1, a chiasma is formed between non-sister chromatids. That is, the maternal and the paternal chromatids. These are non-sister chromatids. As a result of that, DNA is exchanged between these non-sister chromatids. And you can see that as represented by the maternal now having a lowercase b on the bottom right hand side and the paternal now having an uppercase b on the lower left hand side. The rest of meiosis goes exactly as planned as before. So the homologous pair separates during meiosis 1 and then again, the sister chromatids separate during meiosis 2. But the outcome this time, in terms of gametes, is slightly different. Observe the two gametes in the middle. Those two gametes in the middle are as a result of recombination. These gametes are called recombinants. In particular, the two gametes in the middle are referred to as recombinants because they occurred as a result of recombination. Contrast those gametes with the ones that did not undergo recombination in the previous example. You can observe in the bottom row that we have two gametes identical on the left-hand side and two gametes identical on the right-hand side, a total of two different types of gametes. But on the top, as a result of recombination, we have four totally different types of gametes. The two in the middle, the recombinants, these are the ones that have increased our genetic variation so that we have four different types of gametes as a result of recombination, as opposed to the two different types at the bottom when there was no recombination. 